First up, with a shortfall in world sheep meat supply and predicted higher prices, market conditions look very encouraging for lamb and mutton for the foreseeable future. That's in spite of the global economic crisis. One challenge though will be to continue our 20 year trend of producing ever more meat from a declining national flock. There's growing evidence that will take a renewed focus on getting more out of maternal ewes. Tim Dawson reports. The days when wool was the main focus of the Australian sheep industry and meat a byproduct are long gone. Years of lower than average wool prices and rising lamb and mutton prices mean producers now get relatively higher returns for mixed and purely meat oriented flocks. But this shift is having a major impact on the structure of the national flock. Um, over the past number of years we've seen the Australian sheep flock decline. Um, over the past 12 years it's declined around 37% while lamb slaughters increased 34%. And this has been driven by uh, Australian producers focusing more on first and second cross lamb production um, and away from wool production. We've seen wool prices easing um, over the past number of years um, and just in 2008 alone we saw sale yard lamb prices average 19% higher year on year and we're expecting prices to re remain firm going forward. So we do expect to see this shift um, into land production continue. The challenge is managing this shift, balancing the need to turn off more sheep to service meat demand against the need to sustain the national breeding flock. But is the industry striking this balance? Even with sheep numbers half that of 20 years ago, Merino ewe numbers are still falling at a rate of a million a year. And this declining sheep flock is, is a major challenge for us. Um, the merino is, really does underpin the, not only the wool industry but also the lamb industry. And at the moment we, she's reaching a point where it's just not sustainable. Basically there's the numbers of merino ewes that are going into to, 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 to meat production um, means there's not, not sufficient ewes left to, to generate the, the merino daughters. The sheep CRC estimates that reproduction rates between 5 and 10 per cent higher are needed across the industry. Thankfully the signs are that this target can easily be exceeded. You know, 20 per cent gains are achievable. You know, 10 per cent from, from 10 to 15 per cent from nutrition right now and then over the 10 year horizon from both within flock selection and also improved genetics an additional 10 per cent is, is achievable. Pilot schemes have proved that better nutrition can produce cost-effective results. The Lifetime Ewe Management Program involved 300 producers in Victoria, half of them were lamb producers, and recorded the performance of over 2 million ewes. By managing the condition of ewes at specific times in their cycle, both stocking rates and reproduction rates rose by 15%, which increased the number of lambs weaned per hectare by 30%. At the same time, ewe mortality dropped from above 4% to about 2%. The pilot has been so successful, it's being rolled out nationally in the spring with the support of MLA and the sheep CRC. But longer term, improvements will come from having the right ewes, not just feeding them right. Okay, so optimising your investment in ewes is pretty important, but getting it right can involve some tricky maths. Educated guesswork might get you half the way, but there should be a way to do it with some more precision. Well, now there are two new tools that do the number crunching for the individual producer. Both come from the sheep CRC. The first, the terminal sire calculator, works out the maximum number of ewes that can be used for meat production in a self-sustaining flock. Without this tool, a lot of people are finding that they're mating too many to terminal sires and there's not enough animals to self-replace their breeding flocks. And that's both on-farm and industry-wide. The second tool, the simultaneous assortment model, has been part funded by MLA. It identifies which ewes within your flock to join for meat and which to join for wool. So rather than just mating your oldest age group to, for meat production or selecting your animals for wool production for your breeding flock and then using the excess for meat production, um, this tool is designed to optimise both flocks at once. Optimising profit for wool and meat at the same time. You can download both calculators free from the Sheep CRC website, but use selection goes far beyond simply divvying up your flock. There is typically huge variation, with reproductive rates in the top and bottom quarters of an average flock ranging from 140% down to 
down to 30%. The Sheep CRC and MLA are developing practical methods for selecting the most productive ewes, such as making pregnancy scanning cheaper and more widely available, and adding Australian sheep breeding values for traits like lambing ease and mothering ability. Maternal sire with a plus 15 for number of lambs weaned, that could be worth about an extra $1,000 um, in terms of the, the productivity of those daughters or his daughters throughout their lifetime. All this investment will ensure that Australian producers can capitalise on growing global demand for sheep meat. Uh, well this year we're expecting to see higher numbers of lambs sold um, and also stronger prices and this is despite the global financial crisis and the impact that's going to have on sheep meat demand going forward. We expect this um, easing in demand to be largely offset by uh, the lower Australian dollar and also a shortfall in New Zealand supply. This is undoubtedly good news for many Australian producers but it requires careful management on a national scale to ensure the flock can deliver the goods.